In this video, we're going to uncover some of the properties of the infinite square well. So the infinite square well corresponds to the potential that is equal to something like this. So it's equal to 0 when x is between 0 and a, and it's equal to infinity other, uh, everywhere else. So you can visualize this by drawing a graph. This is the x-axis, v of x. And then between 0 and a, the potential is equal to 0. And then everywhere else, the potential is equal to infinity. So this is what the potential looks like. So in order to uncover some of the properties of the case of the infinite square well, we're going to have to solve this differential equation over here. So recall that earlier in the book, we found that the for the wave function is equal to this separable solution over here. It's equal to this xi of x times e to the power of negative i e t divided by h bar. So this is a result we found earlier in the book. So the wave function is equal to some function in terms of x times some function in terms of t. So in order to find the wave function, all we have to do is to find xi of x. And we know that xi of x satisfies this differential equation over here. So if we solve this, then we can find that wave function. So this is what we're going to focus on doing. We're going to focus on solving this differential equation to find xi of x. So to, uh, if the xi of x for the infinite square well over here, uh, first thing you should notice is that xi of x is equal to 0 when you're outside of the well. So when you're outside in these regions over here. So when x is larger than a and x is smaller than 0. And you'll see why this is true later on when you move on to the finite square well. So later on you encounter a case, uh, the finite square well, and then you can take some limits. And then you see that the particle is has to be bound between 0 and a. So there's no chance to find the particle outside in these regions over here. So uh, at this point, you just have to take this for granted for now. And uh, so we found the xi of x for the case outside of the well, but we still don't know what xi of x is uh, inside of the well, so in this region over here. So that's what we're going to be focusing on finding in this video. So within this region from 0 to a, we know that the potential is equal to 0. So the potential is equal to 0, so this that means this term here is equal to 0, so we can just get rid of it. So for the case when you're inside 0 and a, we know that xi of x must satisfy this uh, differential equation. And so that means this relationship must be satisfied for the case when x is between 0 and a. And you see that this differential equation is much easier to solve now that this term is gone. So uh, let's focus on focus on solving this differential equation. So first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to dump all the constants to the other side. And then I'm going to let this whole constant over here be equal to k square. So that means k is equal to the square root of 2me divided by h bar. So this just becomes negative k square xi. So the second derivative of a function is equal to negative some constant squared times uh, the function itself. So this is actually the uh, differential equation that, that frequently comes up in classical mechanics. So this is actually the case of uh, the classical harmonic oscillator. And then uh, if you check out the, diff the solution for that case over here, uh, for the harmonic oscillator, you see that the solution is equal to some constant times sine kx plus some constant times cosine kx. And you can verify that this solution is indeed true if you just substitute it back into this differential equation over here. So we're going to use this result, and uh, we're going to have to find what a and b and k should be. So we don't know what k is because we still don't know what e should be. So once we found these constants, then we would have found our xi x. And once we found sine of xi x, that means we would have found our wave function. So now let's focus on finding these constants. So in order to find these constants, we're going to have to use some boundary conditions. And the boundary condition that we're going to use is this expression over here. So xi 0 and xi a is equal to 0. And the reason for this is because xi x is a continuous function. And then in order to uh, keep this xi x continuous, we know that xi x is equal to 0 when you're outside of the well, right? So uh, I don't know what xi x is going to happen. So I don't know what's going to happen inside of the well. But I do know that it's going to be continuous. So on the both ends, when x is equal to 0 and when x is equal to a, it has to be equal to 0 so that it will uh, kind of continue on. Uh, it will stick to the two ends over here. 
because xi of x is equal to 0 outside of the well. So that's why this boundary condition must be true. So now we can use this to try to deduce some of the constants over here. So let's consider xi 0. And when x, uh, so when we substitute 0 into x, we see that this term here is just equal to 0, sine 0 is just 0, and then cosine 0 is equal to 1. So we just get b, so this whole thing is just equal to b, and then we know that this must be equal to 0. So that means b is equal to 0. And so that means this term can be just can just be ignored, so, because b is equal to 0. So now we've obtained uh, our first step of simplification, so we get a times sine kx. So now we're going to do use the second boundary condition. We know that xi of a, which is equal to a times xi ka, is also equal to 0. And we know that the sine function, because the sine function looks something like this, we know that this is, uh, so it's equal to, the sine function is equal to 0 at 0 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. And because of this, we know that in order for this expression to be true, ka itself must be equal to 0 uh, plus minus pi plus minus 2 pi plus minus 3 pi. So when ka is equal to any of these uh, possibilities over here, this expression here will be satisfied. So now we've obtained a further simplification. So let's write down what we have right now. So we have sine kx, and here we actually we found that k should be equal to n pi divided by a. So we know that k pi is equal to n pi. So we just divide a over to the other side. So we know that k is equal to n pi. So we have found k as well. So all you have to do now is define a. And then uh, for this k over here, so this is only going to apply for n equal to 1, 2, 3, all the way to infinity. So here you saw that we have possibilities where there is neg uh, 0 and for the negative pi, negative 2 pi. But for here, we're only going to consider the case without 0 and without the negative numbers. And the reason uh, for this is because if k if n is equal to 0, then this is just going to be equal to 0. And so xi of x is just going to be equal to 0. And that doesn't isn't really helpful. So we can ignore the case when n is equal to 0. And then we can also ignore the negative components because sine uh, negative x is just equal to negative sine x. So later on, when we combine our solutions, we can actually, uh, uh, the, if we consider sine the sine negative x components, it will just be redundant because we can just pull the uh, negative sign out and we can just combine it with the signs without the negative signs. So uh, in order to so for the complete solution, we don't have to consider the ends with uh, negative signs. So this is going to be okay over here for n equal to 1, 2, 3, all the way to infinity. So now all we have to do is to find what a is equal to. And before we get to that, we've actually found something pretty important. So we recall that we let k be equal to this expression over here. So we let k be equal to the square root of 2me divided by h bar. And now we've also found that k is equal to n pi divided by a. So now we've found what e is, because if we square both sides, and then do a bit of rearranging. You can see that e is equal to uh, n squared pi squared h bar squared divided by 2m a squared. So this is a very important result. This is actually the energy states, all the possible energy states of the particle inside the infinite square well. And so of course this is uh, going to be for n equal to 1, 2, 3, all the way to infinity. So I'm going to stop here at this video and we're going to continue on with the next video, but this is a very important result that we've also managed to find. So uh, through using the boundary conditions, we've actually managed to also find what e, the energy states, should be equal to, and it's equal to this expression over here.